So you know how testimonials are very important for your website. They are social proof that you're really good at what you do, that you've solved problems for people that might have been very challenging and difficult, but they've led to a very positive outcome for the people you serve, the people you work with. Now, the content of a testimonial, of course, is the most important part of it, but I believe, of course, as a website designer, it also needs to look, I should say they, testimonials, should always look as nice, as beautiful as possible. So I was going through some old pictures on my phone and I came across one that at first glance seems very ordinary, but I thought, aha, if I work with this a bit, I think I can make it into an extraordinary background for a testimonial. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I took an ordinary picture and turned it into something rather extraordinary. Take a look. Alright, so I got the idea for this from a trip that we took as a family to Norway last winter. My husband is originally from Norway, from Oslo, Norway, and we decided to take a short trip into the heart of Oslo, in downtown Oslo. We first went to the Munch Museum, um, dedicated to the famous artist, the Munch, Edvard Munch, who, you know, painted the screen. And after that we walked to the Opera House. Uh, the iconic opera house which is a very cool building because you can actually walk on top of it we didn't do it that day because it was so cold but we took pictures of it then walked to it from the Munch museum skipped the walk on top it was just too cold but we went inside that's a view from I think the opera house um, those are actually uh, I think saunas people often just go here they jump in the ice water and then they go right back into the saunas it's supposed to be very good for you we did not do that maybe we'll do it next time I don't know anyway so we went inside the opera house saw some really nice decorations uh, from the season Christmas time and that's when I started taking pictures of the interior and came across this lovely background and for some reason this really just caught my eye. There were a lot of other things there too that were nice, like I believe these are the different floors within the opera house, um, but my eye kept bearing back to that wall. It was very interesting. And then my husband started taking pictures of our daughter in front of it, and um, yeah, I was just, there was something about this wall, and I thought maybe I could use that in some of my work. We'll see. Well, eventually I did, so let me show you what I came up with. So I am now in Adobe Express, which is one of the apps within the Adobe Creative Cloud. Adobe Express is very much like Canva. In fact, it, it to me is almost identical. Um, I use this because my husband and I have a paid subscription to the Creative Cloud, so I feel like I should use this and I quite like it. Um, anyway, so here's that picture I just showed you of my husband taking a picture of our daughter at the Opera House with that wonderful background. And that's, I think, probably when I reviewed it after coming home back to LA, I thought that could be an interesting backdrop for something in my work. But what, what would that be? I don't know. I have a lot of clients who hate white space. They're kind of intimidated by it. And so I often look at my pictures and think, how can I use them maybe as backgrounds to break up that white space, but still keep it nice and clean, you know, minimalist. And so I decided this one would be a good one. So what I did was, um, and you can do this in Canva, I think pretty much the same way, um, was I duplicated um, this picture first because it's just better to have a copy, I think. So I clicked add, then same size. And oh, you know what? I could have just duplicated that. Um, silly me, duplicate. So we'll go duplicate. All right, so this is the duplicate. And then, um, just really see better what I'm doing, I usually zoom out to about like 25% at first and double click. And what that does is it brings the whole image into view, the frame, and I just stretch the image across the frame. And so this is pretty much what I want to use. You know, I'm just eyeballing it here, okay. And then I go back out to, let's go to 75%, that's still a good size. And what I wanted to do was first desaturate it, take all the color out. So I select it, then click adjustments over here, desaturate it, and that just takes the color out. Then I raise the contrast just a bit, raise the brightness just a bit as well, just eyeballing it here. I do not, I do not have specific numbers in mind. 
highlights. Yeah, you know, play around with these kinds of things, guys, because it's different, I think, for every picture. I did not need to sharpen or blur it, so I went back to adjustments. And then here you have this opportunity to reduce the opacity. Now there, there are some de designers I know who have these set numbers like it's gotta be 10 or 15%. No, you know, you've gotta play around with it until it really looks right. So I think 15% here happens to be a good amount of um, opacity reduction there. And this you can see obviously is really good for putting text on top of. So now with that selected, again, I go over to text and one of the things I like and that I don't like also about things like Canva and Adobe Express is they have all these templates in them. They're good places to start, but for me, they're rarely the finish, the finish line, but they're really good in terms of, you know, kind of sparking my imagination. So I saw this and I liked, um, I did a search for a quotation mark and I like these quotation marks. So I just clicked on that and with one click, it pops it right into my working area, my canvas. And this is, by the way, um, this picture that I, I just adjusted, edited, it is set as the background of the page and I could detach it here, um, but I want this to be the background. Now in Adobe Express, uh, when you get a box, a template uh, like this, if you just click it, you select it, you get this option to ungroup it because this is def different from this, from this, from that. So I just want the quotation marks, I think, or maybe I don't. Well, anyway, um, so I will first ungroup it and then I will get rid of um, this box of text to start. Um, I don't like, if you double click on that, you see it just allows you to edit this. Now I like this gray and then black. It's kind of cool, but I don't like the font, but I like this font. So if I select that over here, then I can see it is called Capitolium 2. And I'm going to remember that because I want this box of font to be Capitolium 2. So I'm going to select Capitolium 2 over here. And it kind of keeps track of, you know, why did I say kind of? It does keep track of what was been what has been used. So I'm just going to select that and they're much better, I think. And I'm going to select this one up here and just delete it. All right. So now we've got our working text here. And this one is too big. Obviously, I think I'm going to reduce the size of that. And then if I were to make this separate, uh, let's see ungroup this again. I selected both and now I can work with these two things individually. So I'm going to move this one up here, reduce its size just a bit and bring this quote over here. And then I'm going to copy this. So just click duplicate, duplicate, and then I'm going to rotate it. So it's, you know, 180 degrees down here. And then I'm going to change the fill color to something outrageously nice like this funky orange. I love these hot pink and orange combinations. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can play around with these things. You can stretch it like that if you want. Move these quotation marks down or up. Um, add another text box to give attribution and so on. So I played ar uh, around with that and the final version I came up with uh, was this. And the quotation marks, as you can see, are smaller. Um, the attribution, the person who gave the quote is down here. Um, this is just an example, but I've got that gray and then that dark, you know, that solid black and then the orange here and so on. So that's just one idea of how to take a very ordinary picture, edit it just a bit, and then put a quotation, a testimonial on top of it. And it really stands out nicely. All right, well, I hope that this has been interesting and informative to you, and um, thanks as always for being here and watching my videos. Please don't forget to click the like or subscribe or both buttons. It does help me quite a bit. I appreciate it. And as always, um, thanks again, and I will see you soon in my next video.